Welcome to Samba Day from 147. We're looking today at the first six verses. And the first six verses do two things which I think every single human being needs. And secondly, what every single Christian knows in the second point. And we're going to do them in reverse order than they appear in the text. Uh, the first thing that Psalm 147 does that I want to uh, reflect on is it demonstrates a great truth which I think even non-Christians believe. And they believe, generally speaking, I think, of the verse I'm about to read out to you. Now, verse 4 says this, That's God. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. And so it's a verse that is speaking about the vast power, knowledge, and ability of God to create and sustain his universe. And I think even uh, your hardened non-Christian friends quite often do believe this type of truth. That is, there is a God. He's out there. He knows stuff. He has created stuff. And this world operates because not of natural selection or just a fluke of some sort of imaginary process of what created matter, but it started off because a God created it. And he knows stuff, like he knows the stars. And I think a lot of us hold that truth irrespective of your Christian faith. That is, God's there, he's big, he knows stuff. But a lot of people who know that aren't Christians. And the reason is, they may have this abstract view of God, this knowledge that God is out there. He does stuff out there. Even if he's put me here, I have no personal relationship to this God who is so big and large that, you know, what can I do about it? I'm created. I can't know him. I don't know him. My life seems to exist quite fine, irrespective of this knowledge of God that you say is out there. And God wants to not merely say he's the God of the universe, of which he is, the God who sustains all the universe of which he does, God is also a personal God. And so the key thing in life is not whether you know that there is a God who exists, is that do you know the God who personally exists in you? Do you know him personally? And that's the other magnificent aspect to this psalm. Let me read now the first couple of verses. Praise the Lord, that great beginning of many psalms. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. You go, well, why is that good? And it's not just because of his knowledge that we've already spoken about, the vastness of his power to create. It is the vastness of his power to personally relate. Like a king who stoops down to our level is a God who understands and loves the smallest one of us, not merely the king. He is a God who personally wants to know you. And this is what the next couple of verses begin to now demonstrate. Listen to these verses. Verse 2. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And then it goes on to say, he determines the number of the stars. So on the one hand, in verse uh, 4, you have the amount of power and knowledge he has in terms of his universal creative power. But verse 3 is... He heals the brokenhearted. God wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to bring you home, like he said in verse 2. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. And so he's not merely the God of people out there. He's the God of people like you and me. He wants to bring you home, to remove you from the exile that you've created by saying, God, I don't need to know about you. You may exist out there, but that has no relationship to me. And God says, yes, it does. I not merely have a relationship to the world I've created. I want to have a personal relationship to you. I want to bring you home. Because sadly, you don't realize it yet, some of you. You're in exile. You're in exile from God by living your own life separated from him. And when he invites you home, you see that part of being brought home is to heal your broken heart. A broken heart by sin. The sin of saying to God, I don't need you. I don't want you. And even if you appear to me, I'm quite happy to live my own life my own way. The brokenness and dysfunction that that type of you has caused to our world is sadly seen on the evening news every night of the week and in your own hearts in the way you live your life. And God says he's going to heal that broken heart and this caused by sin. And bind up their wounds. 
people are brought to faith in Jesus Christ, generally speaking, not by virtue of how huge they see God. He's a God of power and might, justice and truth, all of which are amazingly true. I think people are brought to faith in Jesus Christ by seeing how much this amazing God of the universe got down to our level and said, I love you. You deserve judgment. And in fact, verse 6 goes on to speak about the judgment that he will sustain in this world. But this judgment that we so richly deserve is something that the Lord Jesus Christ himself took upon himself at the cross. It's a sign of his love for us demonstrated through his son, the Lord Jesus. And by that love, he heals up the broken wound, broken hearted. He wants to bind up the wound created in your life by your sin and rejection of God. The God of this universe loves you and came to demonstrate that love in Jesus. That he would heal your broken hearted and bring you home. We do accept that. If you do, then you are home indeed. Loved by the God of the entire universe. And that is something, as this psalm would say, that is imminently praiseworthy and worthy to sing about. Amen.